Hello, welcome to Prospect Kentucky, May 9th, uh, 2020, Saturday, uh, for another edition of Bourbon and Books with a Doctor. I'm Dr. Andrew DeGruccio, orthopedic surgeon and amateur mixologist, and tonight we're going to be making you the final ward. Uh, it's been several days. Uh, I've started slowing down in these videos, but uh, we're letting you catch up with some of the books and the cocktails I've made before. Uh, this is a, a cocktail that is a fine sipping cocktail using some of the ingredients we've used in previous cocktails. Uh, so let's get right to it. Um, for the final ward, we're going to basically be using small portions of our ingredients. Today I'll be featuring my old granddad, old granddad 114 bourbon. The cocktail uh, traditionally calls for rye whiskey, but of course I will go ahead and switch that up for bourbon. And we're only going to get about three quarters of an ounce of that. So that's our old granddad. Next, we'll be taking our uh, maraschino liqueur. I have Lusseroni, but of course a lot of people like Luxardo. Does not matter to me. And we need three quarters of an ounce of the maraschino liqueur. I'm pouring that over ice into my shaker. And last but not least, we're going to be taking our green chartreuse, uh, one of my favorite mixers. And uh, for those that have watched some of my videos before, uh, it's question, uh, question and answer time. Uh, Question for you all, how many Alpine ingredients go into the green chartreuse? And what is the proof of the green chartreuse? You can go back and watch my Greenpoint cocktail cocktail or video to get the answer. But those are your questions on green chartreuse. One of my favorite to use. In any case, that needs three quarter of an ounce as well. And then, this cocktail traditionally calls for uh, lemon juice, and it is also three quarters of an ounce. I will warn you not to overpower this cocktail with lemon juice. So if you go a little under three quarters of an ounce, it's probably better. So that's our fresh squeezed lemon juice going in there. That is all of the main ingredients. I'm not going to shake this one tonight. I'm just going to stir it up. It's chilling in here. I've got my glass chilling already out here. We'll pour those ice off. And I'm going to give this a double strain. So it looks appealing with no ice shards in the glass. It's got that nice green appearance of uh, green chartreuse. You can see what the lemon juice does to also create that appearance. Now we're going to hit that with a lemon twist for garnish. If I can twist it properly, we'll drop that right in there. And I am going to add, also add one of my, my bourbon-soaked cherries right there. So that is the final ward. It is a variant of the last word. Last word is made with gin. The final ward is made with whiskey, rye, or in this case, bourbon. And as all cocktails that are made with green chartreuse. It is a very hard cocktail to describe. Very interesting, very tasty. It's got so many different elements to it. It's very hard to describe all of them. So that's our cocktail for tonight. Let's pair that with a book. We've given you a whole week to catch up on all the previous books, so it's time for another one. Today, I will encourage you to read The Brilliant Disaster. Uh, this is a, a really good retelling in depth of the Bay of Pigs fiasco uh, that occurred in 1961 uh, under the watch of uh, John F. Kennedy. And it basically 
If many people don't remember the Bay of Pigs, that's because they don't want you to remember the Bay of Pigs. It's the military fiasco, probably one of the very first losses militarily that we actually have to accept and recognize. Um, and it is what created a bad reputation internationally for the United States in terms of uh, other countries just not believing many of the things what we were telling them. Uh, this was a clandestine activity um, done under the uh, CIA and John F. Kennedy. And all of these guys were really brilliant guys, hence the title of this book. But they still came up with a terrible plan that they just couldn't stop. So this book talks about the concept of uh, groupthink and how that takes advantage of even very intelligent people. So I encourage you to read this book because the concept of groupthink comes from this book and from the Bay of Pigs fiasco. In any case, I also like to highlight my shirt today, one of my concert shirts. Shout out to Death Cab for Cutie. Ben Gibbard's been online most of the last two months providing uh, live entertainment from his home. And I appreciate him for that. So shout out to Death Cab for Cutie. Can't wait to get back to concerts after concerts are, are allowed, which may be several months to come. We're finishing up. We're at Healthy at Work now. We're coming out of our shell, uh, but we got to do it safely. Coronavirus is still a big concern for a second peak of, of illnesses, and you can still get sick from it. It has not gone away, so please keep washing your hands. Wear a mask when you're out in public. Safe uh, social distancing, and when you go to a place of business, practice these uh, concepts. Don't be close to people. Don't be sitting in waiting rooms. No crowding, no groups. We need to keep that up for several more months.